On today's show, Tesla pushes back its international launch date for the Model 3 electric sedan to next year. Jaguar says it's working on an SVR variant of the iPACE that could technically beat the second generation Tesla Roadster, and Hyundai is rumored to be working on building its own lithium ion cells, presumably to help it combat the chronic battery pack shortage that it's currently experiencing. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki, your resident Ecotech host, and I've got some cracking stories from the world of clean cars and energy for you this week. So let's get started with an update to that Tesla Model 3 breaking distance story from last week. As I'm sure you'll all remember, US-based consumer reports had said that it couldn't recommend people buy the Tesla Model 3 because in its own independent testing, it observed average stopping distances for Model 3 that were longer than the stopping distance of a big F-150 pickup truck. At the same time, Tesla and Elon Musk promised to look into it and quickly trace the problem to a faulty calibration subroutine in the braking system. A few tweaks later, and Tesla pushed updated software to customers' cars by the over-the-air update system. And now, Consumer Reports, after retesting the braking distances, says it's more than happy to recommend customers buy a Model 3. All's well that ends well, eh? Sticking with Tesla, the company confirmed this week that those waiting for a Tesla Model 3 outside of the US may have a little longer to wait than had originally been hoped, pushing back the start of international deliveries of Model 3 to somewhere between early to mid-2019. It's hardly a surprise for those who've been keeping track of Tesla's production volumes, but it is sad news to anyone who's already been waiting for more than two years to get their hands on a Model 3. And if you live in a right-hand drive country, it's worth noting that date is for exports to start to left-hand drive countries. And given that Tesla has already said right-hand drive deliveries will lag left-hand deliveries significantly, you're in for an even longer wait if you're in a country which drives on the left. Sorry. As it gears up to launch its first mass-produced electric car in the form of the Audi e-tron Quattro SUV, Audi has dropped some extra details in our lap this week about how the mid-sized crossover has managed to achieve a drag coefficient of 0.28, a figure normally reserved for much smaller hatchbacks and sedans. According to Audi, it's used everything from dimpling, like what you see on golf balls, on the underside body panels of the e-tron Quattro to active air suspension that can lower the suspension and reduce drag at high speed. It also plans on using rear view cameras rather than mirrors in countries where such an arrangement is legal and, says Audi, helps the e-tron Quattro achieve a range of 400 kilometers 248 miles on the new WLTP test cycle. It's not clear which markets will ultimately allow those rear view cameras, but of course, when specs are released for each market, I'll let you know. It may only be in the early days of launching its iPACE electric crossover SUV, but Jaguar Land Rover looks as if it might be already at work developing a special performance variant of the long range car that will wear the SVR performance badge. While Jaguar told Autocar this week it could technically produce an SVR variant with a 0 to 60 miles per hour time of 1.8 seconds or quicker, which would be faster than the Tesla Roadster second generation, it seems the iPACE is likely not to go that route, with Jaguar reasoning that the instant torque and performance might be a little too much for the average car driver. Instead, it says it will be focusing on handling performance and road manners, and I presume perhaps a tweak or two to power output. Although Jaguar stopped short of confirming the car would make it out of the workshop and onto the production line, there is hope. Given Jaguar is already producing a race-ready iPACE for use in a race series, I'm sure we're gonna see an iPACE SVR sometime soon. That's if demand is high enough. As more and more companies around the world produce lithium-ion battery packs, both for gadgets and electric vehicles, there's more pressure on them to ensure that the cobalt they use in their battery packs, an essential component in most lithium-ion battery chemistries, is sourced responsibly and not connected to child labor in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. As a large producer of lithium-ion cells, Tesla has already researched and developed new cell chemistries that use far less cobalt than the competition, 
think a few kilograms per car, but it released its conflict minerals report this week to disclose just what it's doing to ensure the cobalt it's using right now comes from ethical sources. At the moment, Tesla says it's not uncovered any human rights abuse in its supply chains, and while its supplier chain is growing, as the number of batteries it needs to make is on the increase, Tesla says it's confident that none of the materials it uses in its vehicles come from places which violate basic human rights. As well as working on bringing a whole slew of new electric cars to market, Mercedes-Benz is readying a series of electric commercial vehicles, one of which will be an all-electric variant of its popular Sprinter van. This week, we heard details of the specifications for the first time, with Mercedes-Benz promising a choice of 41 kilowatt hour or 55 kilowatt hour battery packs, with the larger pack offering a range of around 150 kilometers when loaded up with 900 kilograms of payload. Like other short-range small delivery vans, this vehicle is not meant to be long distance, but is instead built to operate on short inner-city routes, where recharging from empty to 80% full during a 45-minute lunch break is more important than being able to drive non-stop for eight hours straight. Last year, there were more than 3.7 million electric cars on the world's roads, and that figure is going to triple in the next two years. And that's according to the International Energy Agency, which released a new report midweek that predicts we'll see electric vehicle sales increase by an average of 24% each year over the next 12 years. This will displace somewhere in the region of 2.57 million barrels of oil per day by 2030, which is about as much oil as Germany uses at the moment each day. While that's still a drop in the ocean on a global scale, it's great news for those of us who want to see cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation take dominance moving forwards. With battery shortages playing havoc with its rollout plans for the Ionic EV, Hyundai is rumored to be looking into building its own battery production facilities. At least that's according to The Investor, which says that the South Korean company has been hiring battery researchers over the past few months and is planning to open up its own research lab in Yuwang later this year. At the moment, Hyundai, like Kia, relies on LG Chem and SK Innovation for its cells, but with Demand high from other automakers who are already placing far larger orders for batteries and so get dominance, it seems to make sense that the two sister companies are looking for an alternative battery source. At the moment, a company spokesperson has admitted it is looking to produce its own batteries, but declined to comment as to if they would find a home in future Hyundai or Kia vehicles. On the other side of the world, Tesla is also working hard to increase its supply of lithium-ion batteries and as such has just flown six planes full of battery production line equipment from its German engineering arm Grommen to the Reno Gigafactory. Usually, heavy machinery like this is shipped by sea as shipping by air is incredibly costly and a little more risky too. But with Tesla under the gun to produce as many Model 3s as possible and make up that production backlog, saving time is more important right now to Tesla than saving money. And finally, what do you do if you're an automaker looking to celebrate selling 100,000 examples of a particular car, either globally or in a specific market? Well, if you're Nissan and that car is the Nissan Leaf, apparently the answer is to have a quasi-convertible LEAF built. Behold the Nissan LEAF open car, a 2018 Nissan LEAF with the roof cut off between the windscreen and the C-pillar. It's not a traditional convertible per se, and is just a show car that Nissan had built to celebrate selling its 100,000th LEAF in the Japanese market. Given the size of the Japanese car market, that is quite an achievement. But as for the topless LEAF, nah. I'd rather see another LEAF pickup, to be honest. Bring it on. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, you know what to do. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness, so make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. You won't miss a single one. Due to me being in the UK for Fully Charged Live next week, there won't be an Ecotech Roundup show next week, but I've got some other goodies ready to keep you happy, and I'll be back as usual in two weeks' time. In the meantime, have a great weekend, make sure you do something fun, and don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.